Welcome to Average Joe's Pool. Today we have a review of the number one best-selling pool cue on Amazon. This is the GSE Fiberglass Graphite Cue. Let's have a look. So as I just mentioned, this pool cue is the number one best-selling pool cue on Amazon, and it has over two and a half thousand reviews and an average score of four and a half stars. But does that mean that it's actually any good? Well, that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. So first things first, this Q is manufactured by GSE. What do we know about GSE? Well, GSE stands for Games and Sports Expert, and they are an American-based seller, and they're owned by Three Winds Imports. And the GSE brand manufactures hundreds of different products for various different sports, including, of course, pool. And as you may well have guessed already, GSE products, including this pool Q, are all made in China. And the particular model that we have here, this is their fiberglass graphite cue, and this cue is available in four different colors. We have the green, as we can see here, also available in blue, red, or black. And additionally, this cue is available in four different weight options. We have the 18 ounce, 19 that we have here, also 20 or 21 ounces. And with regards to price for this cue, the current price on Amazon for this cue right now is $38.98. And it's also worth noting that GSE supply a four pack of this cue, so you get each of the four different colors, all for just under $100. That makes them $25 per cue. So from a price perspective, these are definitely a top contender, which is probably why they are one of the best selling cues on Amazon. And additionally, GSE also supply this queue with a one year limited warranty, which is quite unusual for a queue at this price point. And we will be adding Amazon links for this queue for both the single queues and the four packs into the video description. So if this video has been helpful for you, can you please help us out in return and please be sure to click on our Amazon links. So now we know some of the basics when it comes to our GSE pool queue, but we need to delve in a little bit deeper. Let's take a look at the spec check. No, Mike, we're getting... Look, it's probably one of uh, Mel's little green perverts. So first of all, packaging and the GSEQ comes supplied in surprisingly good packaging. Now the Q came in the usual clear poly bag. However, in addition to that, it did come in a cardboard box within which it had a full polystyrene insert to help protect the Q. So from a design perspective, as I said, this Q is available in those four different colors, the green, red, blue, or black. And they have a solid paint finish that GSC describe as matte. However, as we can see, it is actually quite a shiny paint. I would say it's more of a pearlescent finish. And with regards to construction, GSC claim that this is a fiberglass and graphite composite cue. And when it comes to these composite cues, that can actually mean several different things. For example, one construction method would be to have fiberglass on the outside around a wood core. Or another example could be that your butt is made from entirely man-made materials with perhaps a wooden insert for holding the pin in place. And so when they use the term composite, unfortunately, it can mean quite a few different things when it comes to construction methods. And hopefully we'll find out a little bit more about the construction of this queue as we progress through our tests. And with regards to cosmetics, as you can see, it is a fairly simple yet modern looking design. And pretty much the only small design flair that we have on this queue would be this ABS joint collar, complete with two decorative silver rings. And with regards to the wrap, as you can see, we have this plain black wrap, and this is made from Velex, which is actually a microfiber material, and it has a rubberized feel to it. And for our butt cap, we have a plain black rubber with no logos. And with regards to logos on this queue, there is only one, and that is towards the end of the butt. And for our joint here, it's actually a 3 8 by 10 joint, complete with a stainless steel pin. So next, let's move down and take a look uh, at the shaft. And as we can see, uh, the shaft is finished in exactly the same color as the butt. And with regards to the profile that we have here for the taper on the shaft, it definitely does have a fairly nice taper. It's not a straight conical taper. It does have a slight shape to it, a slight scoop uh, leading into probably the last uh, 16 inches or so. The sh small shoulder sat around this area right here. And with regards to the uh, ferrule uh, that we have here, uh, this is described as a one inch uh, fiber ferrule finished in white. 
And when we measured the length of the ferrule actually came in at 24.13 millimeters. And for the tip on this cue, quite surprisingly at this price, we have a leather layered tip and it's described as being 12.7 millimeters in diameter. And when we measured it, it did indeed measure spot on. So let's talk dimensions. Uh, this cue is sold as a 58 inch cue. And when we measured this cue from tip to toe, it actually came in at 58 and a half inches. And if we take away from that, both the tip and also the rubber butt cap, it measures in at 57 and 7 eighths inches. And our overall cue length comprised of a shaft length of 29 and 5 16 inches and a butt length of 29 and 3 16 inches. And when it comes to diameters, our diameter right here at the butt end is 30.2 millimeters. And our diameter here at the joint came in at 20.12 millimeters. And with regards to weight, we always try and review a 19 ounce model. And that's precisely what we have here. And our 19 ounce Q came in very, very close to that at 18.915 ounces. And the overall weight consisted of a shaft weight of 3.945 ounces and a butt weight of 14.97 ounces. And with all pull cues that we review, we always like to remove the rubber butt cap and have a look at what's inside. And being a 19 ounce cue, you would usually expect to find a weight bolt in the end. However, as you can see, the GSE cue actually had no weight in the butt at all. And also interestingly, when we had that butt cap removed, there doesn't seem to be a single trace of wood on that end of the butt. And it appears when you look inside the butt that it may be entirely made from man-made materials. But on the flip side of that, when you look at the opposite end on the joint end of the butt, we can see that we definitely do have wood. So it appears that we've got the wood on one end and entirely man-made on the other end. So it's going to be interesting to see if we can uncover what this cue is actually made from as we progress through the review. And with regards to the uh, center of balance, uh, when we measured the center of balance for this cue, it actually came in at 16 and 1 8 inches measured from the rear of the cue, including the butt cap, which definitely makes this somewhat of a rear heavy cue. So now we know exactly what our GSE Q is, but we don't yet know if it's actually any good. To do that, we need to do some technical tests. Let's do it. Come on. For test number one, we'll start with the basics and see how straight the GSE is. And in addition to a basic visual inspection, we'll be running three straightness tests, starting with the good old fashioned favorite, the table roll test. And this very basic test throws up no real problems for the GSE. I would say that perhaps we have a tiny amount of wobble just visible on the shaft side, but it's very hard to see. So let's up the difficulty for test number two, the rail roll test. And for this test, we simply roll the cue along the solid rail of the table and check the tip for visible wobble. The first thing we noticed was just how springy and soft the shaft seemed to be, which caused notable vibration during the roll. Just take a look at how much spring we have in this shaft. It's insane. But vibration aside, we do have a visible wobble on the tip, but it's not looking too bad. So let's run the toughest test of all and get this cue onto the ball bearing cue rollers. And again, we see more vibration, but more notably, we do have quite a large amount of wobble telling us we're a fair way off being straight and true. And when you move the front roller to halfway up the shaft, you can see that we have wobble visible at both the joint and the tip at the same time. And as we move the roller up to the front end of the queue, this will often iron out much of the visible wobble. But with the GSE, you can see that we still have wobble visible at the tip. And you can easily see just how unstraight this queue is along its entire length as it rolls whilst twisting itself in different directions. But very simply, there's nothing straight about this cue. Yes, it is cheap, so we can forgive a certain amount of wobble. But what we're seeing here is more wobble than we'd like to, coupled with a clear misalignment in several places. So the GSE should count itself lucky, scoring one and a half stars out of five for straightness, with its low price being its saving grace from an even worse fate. You're lucky you're cheap, Mr. GSE. 
In addition to play testing, which we'll be covering shortly, we have a couple of deflection tests set up for the GSE, starting with squirt. And our squirt test is conducted over a length of 75 inches, which is the distance between the head spot and the rear rail on a nine foot table. And we couple maximum parallel English with a hard shot. And we test at least 10 times on both sides for an accurate average. And the first thing we noticed was just how inconsistent the GSE was. And this was likely due to the amount of flexibility that we've seen in the shaft, coupled with the straightness issues. The GSE limped home with a very unimpressive 3 and 3 8 inches, a result that is well under average. So let's move on to our second deflection test, natural pivot length. And for this test, we gradually increased the bridge length whilst using full backhand English until we established the maximum possible length, which is then replicated at least three times on both sides to ensure accuracy. And the key to this test is simple, longer is better. And the GSE actually did quite well, coming in with 13 and 5 8 inches, which is a touch better than average. And this was a surprising result for us, especially considering how flexible and springy the shaft appears to be. Not bad GSE, not bad at all. So we've now run this cue through the technical side of the performance tests. So now we can move on to something a little bit more fun and get this on the table and actually start playing with it. Now here at Average Joe's Pool, every product we review, we ensure it gets a minimum of five hours use on the table to ensure that we can bring you a fair overall review. So what do you say? Let's get this lean green machine onto the table. Let's play. Up, you punk. <laughs> so let's talk performance and first of all full disclosure I must admit that I was absolutely dreading the thought of having to spend five plus hours of my life with this cue. Now I have absolutely no issue at all playing with cheaper cues and play with cheaper cues all the time uh, however this thing does seem a little bit gimmicky with its uh, green shaft and its use of kind of fiberglass and composite materials it's not a standard cue and I thought well, it's probably somewhat of a toy rather than a serious cue. And I'm glad to report that overall, this cue by far exceeded my expectations. It's actually not a bad cue. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not an amazing pool cue, and it's highly unlikely you're going to be winning any tournaments with it. But that said, it is a surprisingly capable cue, especially when you consider the low price you're actually paying for it. 
Now when we have this thing on the uh, cue rollers where we were playing around with it we noticed how much flexibility there was in the end of the cue. It had a real ping to it, it had a lot of flex and you could let go of it and had a lot of bounce. So I was thinking this cue is probably going to be terrible when it comes to applying spin to your shots. But again when it came to spin this was definitely more capable than we were expecting. And with regards to cue ball control, it's actually fairly solid, especially for shots where you're sticking around the center line of the cue ball. However, when you do start moving your cue to the outside of the ball to apply spin, then things do definitely get a little less predictable. But again, it wasn't bad, and we have to put that into context because this is as far from a low deflection cue as you're probably likely to find. You've got to remember, we are only spending $40 here, we're not spending $500. Now one of the oddities that I found when it comes to this cue is it does tend to behave quite differently depending on the strength of the shot that you're playing. And of course all pool cues do tend to uh, behave a little bit differently depending on what you're doing with it, but it's certainly more noticeable with this particular cue. Now that behaviour is highly likely down to the construction materials that have been utilised for this cue. Remember this is not a wood cue, this is using composite and fibreglass type materials. And what I found with this cue is when you do a particularly hard shot, that shot actually feels quite soft. It feels like you've got a very soft tip on the end of the cue. Whereas when you're doing short shots, it's very much like having a hard tip on the cue. And when you're applying about three quarter power, what you tend to get is quite a dead feeling shot. Now, as mentioned, pool cues do feel different when you're applying different levels of power. However, it was really, really noticeable, perhaps amplified with this particular cue. And a minor niggle that I found with this cue, it's not particularly good when it comes to doing hard shots such as break shots. Because as I mentioned before, those shots do have that particularly soft feel to them. So it's actually quite hard to generate decent power through this cue. And again, we have to remember it's not a break cue, this is a budget cue. It's more than capable of breaking, but you're certainly not going to set any world records with it. Now one thing that I definitely did not like about this cue is the painted shaft. And the reason being that it is particularly rough to the feel. Now, when I was using this, I was using a glove, so it wasn't too bad sliding through the fingers. However, if you're a player that doesn't use a glove, especially if you use a closed bridge where you're wrapping your finger over the top of it, that is a really super grippy material. It does not slide through the fingers easily at all. And so in that respect, I would definitely much prefer to have a standard maple shaft that tend to be a lot smoother running through the hands. And speaking of grippy, another minor negative would be the Veltex grip. Now overall, this is an excellent grip as we'll cover in the quality section. Uh, however, I did find one particular issue with this. And that is the simple fact that this Veltex grip is super grippy against your clothes. Now how much that could affect your game will depend entirely on your particular pool stance. Because for some players the butt of the cue will never actually touch your body. However for other players it may well brush against your body. And if it does brush against your body this thing is definitely going to grip at your clothes. And that can be a little bit distracting and also a little bit annoying. It's not quite as grippy as a rubber grip but it's not far off. So if that's something that might affect your game then you might want to stick to a cue that has a linen wrap. So with all that in mind let's go ahead and give our GSC an official score for performance. So overall and keeping the low price in mind the GSC played a little better than expected and it does offer acceptable performance provided you don't push it too hard. So the GSC scores a better than expected two and a half stars out of five for performance. Now when it comes to features, our GSE pool cue is certainly packed with features because this is such an unusual cue. So let's start with a couple of the most obvious features, things that you can easily see. First of all, let's consider our Veltex wrap. And Veltex is a proper branded product, so it's nice to see something like this on such a cheap cue. And it must be said that this wrap is super, super grippy. Uh, how effective this is at moisture wicking, I don't really know because we're filming here in Canada in spring and so we're not really getting all that sweaty. But from a grip perspective, this is definitely bang on. Now this Veltex material is definitely a lot grippier than a traditional linen wrap. Uh, however, that could have a slight drawback depending on your particular pool stance as we've already covered in the performance section. So moving down to the opposite end of the queue, uh, what we have here is an unbranded leather layered tip. Now of course this is not going to be the world's greatest tip, however it is really nice to see a proper layered leather tip coming in on a pool queue at this price point. 
And another feature that we have that's fairly unusual, of course, is we have a painted shaft on this queue. Now, whilst that might not appeal to everyone, it does give the queue a very unique and distinctive look, and it definitely makes it stand out from the majority of pool queues. And another small feature is we do have these twin silver rings on either side of our joint. And perhaps the elephant in the room when it comes to this particular queue, of course, its biggest feature is going to be exactly what this queue is made from. Now it is actually quite difficult to determine what this pool queue is actually made from because GSE state that it's made from fiberglass and graphite. However, when you undo the uh, joint here, you can clearly see timber on both sides of the joint. Whereas when we remove the rubber butt cap and had a look inside, you could see that it all had a very shiny plastic looking uh, finish to the internals. Now on the uh, butt cap end, I wasn't sure whether that was a plastic insert that had been placed inside timber because when you feel the end of the uh, queue there, where the uh, paint is, the slight overspray, it does feel very rough and does have a wood-like texture to it. So whilst I was there, I decided to scrape away some of the paint to find out whether this thing is actually made from plastic or whether that was just an insert. And once you've scraped that paint away, you can clearly see that this butt is definitely made from man-made materials, be that plastic, graphite, composite, whatever it actually is. And we wanted to delve a little bit deeper to try and give you as much information about what this queue is actually made from as possible. So we had a look at the reviews on Amazon. Now on Amazon, it's got over two and a half thousand reviews and four and a half stars. So it's a very highly rated queue. So of course we do have lots of reviews to look at and also lots of customer photos. And we did find two photos on Amazon from customers who had bought this queue and had had a problem with the joint. And in those photos, you can see precisely how this butt is made. And what we have is a timber insert approximately three inches long with the metal pin on the end. And that uh, sits inside this shaft, which is made entirely of the man-made materials. So that tells us precisely how this queue is constructed and also why we can see the wood in the joint. And when it comes to the construction on the shaft side, unfortunately, we have far less information available. And you're not really going to find out what's inside there unless you start cutting it up, which we don't particularly want to do. So when it comes to construction, we definitely have an unusual combination of materials that feature in this queue. And so if having questions about what your pool queue is actually made from is something that might bother you, then this is probably not the best option for you. So all in all, when it comes to features, we definitely have a lot going on with the GSE. So let's give it an official score. So the GSE definitely has a solid set of unusual features. And whilst not all of them actually benefit the queue, there's certainly plenty of features that set it aside from similarly priced queues. Scoring the GSE a very solid four out of five stars for features. I'm looking for a town called uh, <clears throat> Purgatory. So let's take a look at some of the elements on the GSE queue when it comes to quality. Let's start with the Veltex wrap. And from a quality perspective, I have to say that this wrap is particularly well finished. It is super smooth all the way around, no lumps, no bumps. It is slightly raised, uh, but it's raised evenly all the way around the queue. And what was quite interesting as well is there is no sign of any seam. Often when you uh, use materials such as leather, leather is wrapped around it. So you end up with a line where those two bits of leather come back and meet. Whereas what we have here on this Veltex appears to be completely seamless. So much so that I expect that this is actually supplied in tubular form goes onto the queue and then perhaps is shrunk maybe with a heat onto the queue. But it really does give a really nice, smooth and seamless finish. And throughout the testing process, I do try and keep an eye on the joint to make sure that the joint doesn't come loose. Sometimes on the cheaper queue, it can do after a few hours of play. Uh, however, this remained absolutely rock solid throughout. And with regards to fit and finish, no, it is not the best. When we come to things like our joint here, as you run your, uh, your thumb across it, you can definitely feel uh, that it is slightly raised on, on one side. It's not 100% smooth as you would like to see. But again, we must remember we are in the realm of budget queues. However, as we move uh, up the queue, things are a little bit better uh, towards the front here. Uh, again, uh, the uh, transition between these uh, components uh, coming from the shaft into the ferrule it's not perfect. You can feel it's very slightly raised. Just there. I've got one raised spot there, uh, but it's not bad. It's not terrible and more than acceptable for the money that you're spending and certainly better on this side than we have on the uh, joint here. 
And with regards to the tip, as mentioned before, we do have the layered leather tip. Not the greatest tip in the world, it does have quite a hard uh, feel to it. Uh, but that said, that combination that we have between having the, the hard tip coupled with whatever the uh, fairly flexible material we have here in the shaft actually makes for a decent combination. And talking about the uh, shaft, uh, we do run into a few quality issues here as well. Uh, you can, as you look down it, uh, there is a spot here uh, where I have a little line and I found a line that was about two to three inches long uh, where you could see the seam. It looks like the, the finish, whatever they put on the outside of this queue, is maybe done uh, wrapped around it and has a, a seal that is pressed down. But there is a spot on here, uh, which is about two to three inches long, where you can literally see that line. And likewise, the paint finish is not perfect. Uh, I've got a little uh, bump down in here. I've got a couple of little uh, notches in here. So the paint finish is far from perfect. And with regards to the paint finish that we have on the shaft, uh, from a quality perspective, it's certainly not the best choice because what I found is that it is really, really grippy. Now, if like me, you wear a glove when you're playing, it's not the end of the world. Uh, the cue will slide through your fingers, not too badly. However, if you use an ungloved hand, uh, even on an open bridge, it does pull at your skin, uh, moving it backwards and forwards. And if you're using a closed bridge, it really generates a lot of grip. It doesn't slide through the fingers easily at all. And so that's definitely a big negative when it comes to the overall quality of this cue. Uh, from that perspective, I would much prefer a standard maple shaft rather than this painted shaft. And also when we we're doing the uh, technical test, we were surprised at just how rear heavy this cue actually is. You can see, you know, we're just on the grip there and it's, it's already going to the back. This thing really is super heavy towards the rear end. Now, of course, when you start playing with this, you will get used to that and you will slightly adapt to it. However, it does have a very rearward heavy feel to it, which is going to be a little bit unusual, perhaps a little bit different to most other pool cues that you've probably played with previously. And speaking of weight, it did pretty well. Uh, it's meant to be a 19 ounce cue, measured in at 18.915 ounces, so pretty damn close. Likewise, again, this is a 58 inch cue, and we came in very close to that as well. However, one thing that we did notice when we put this on the cue rollers is this definitely behaves differently to a standard uh, timber cue. We were having some bounce issue with this on the ball bearing rollers, and also we noticed just how springy the end of that cue actually is. Thankfully, that springiness didn't seem to have an overtly negative effect when it came to performance. So let's go ahead and give the GSE its score for quality. So overall, the GSE leaves us wanting more. Yes, it is cheap, but for just an extra $10 more, you can get cues that would leave our little green monster seething with envy. Scoring the GSE a disappointing 2 out of 5 for quality. When it comes to sheer value for money at just $40, you would expect this factor to be the GSE's strongest point. And in many ways, it is. But at $40, it does seem a touch overpriced when you consider just how much better you could be getting at $50. For just an extra $10, the world of pool cues opens up considerably with many options to choose from. Two decent examples would be the Aska L2 or the Viper Underground series, both of which we've reviewed previously on our channel, with both outperforming the GSE and offering a far superior overall playing experience. But if your budget is super tight and $40 is your maximum, then the competition is definitely less fierce. So overall, the GSE offers fair, but not exceptional value for money, scoring it a decent three out of five stars for value. So it's now time to award the GSE its official Average Joe's rating. And to do this, we simply take the scores from across our five test categories and calculate the overall average. And our GSE fiberglass composite pool cue crosses the finish line with a very average 2.6 stars. It may be Amazon.com's best-selling pool cue, but unfortunately it has failed to impress. It's not bad, it's just not great. So when it comes to GSE's fiberglass graphite composite cue, is this a cue you should be buying? 
Well, the very short answer is yes, you absolutely should be considering this queue, especially if you are on a tight budget. This is a lot of queue for just $40. Now, we do have to remember that this is not the world's greatest pool queue. It is very much a budget pool queue. But that said, I was surprised at just how capable this queue was. I was dreading using this and actually it's pretty good. And if you're able to spend a little bit more, maybe an extra 10 or $15, there are other queues that might be overall a slightly better and more rounded option than what we see on the GSE. But remembering that this queue is just $40, it does make an ideal choice. Maybe if you're looking for queues, perhaps for your kids, or you want to keep a couple of cheap house queues on the wall ready for visitors. And please do remember, if you are interested in buying one of these queues, that we will be adding those Amazon links into the video description. And we will be adding links for the single queues available in four colors, currently at $40, as well as the multi-pack uh, where you can get these queues for as low as $25 a queue. So if you are interested in buying these, please be sure to help support what we do here at Average Joe's Pool, and please be sure to click on our Amazon links. So thank you for joining us here at Average Joe's Pool. We always ask before you leave us, if this video has been helpful or entertaining, can you take one second out of your busy schedule to at least hit that like button for us. And whilst you're there, why not also click on that subscribe option and maybe switch on those notifications so you can find out about all of our upcoming videos. So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, just remember, Soylent Green is people. He must eat the chili.